you do this. <laughs> let your head drop, let your jaw drop, roll your head around, just be relaxed, your, legs, your, you know, your knees got a little bend in them like that. Just relax, then you're ready to go. Now, I know you kind of have to get down a little bit because you have to protect your ground on the start, right? I'm not saying start the race like this, you know. <laughs> what, did the race go off? <laughs> but you know, just relax, just relax. The thing that you will always hear me telling my athletes before race is a cue word, and the cue is relax. And we practice it in our visualization sessions before the race. Every week we do at least one visualization session in which you'll do the following. You don't even have to have your eyes closed to do this, but I want you to tense your right arm. Ready? Go. Relax. And then let it drop. And when you do that repeatedly, right, now tense your left arm. Ready? Go. Relax. When you do that repeatedly, you learn to let your muscles relax to the cue word relax. So I, as a coach, will go up to one of my athletes before the run, I'll put my hand on his or her shoulders, and I'll say, relax. And then the tension just sort of dissipates. A smile goes a long ways too, right? You know, you say this to your teammates right before you know you're, you all want your teammates to do well, and you see the teammate going out there, and you can see the look of panic on his or her eyes. Just go up and hold them on the shoulders and give them a little massage and, and smile. Say, relax, you'll be all right, have fun out there. It's a totally different attitude than we learn from the movies, which is you're supposed to be you're either stoic or psyched up or you know, ready to kill somebody, right? It's a totally different attitude, but it's an attitude that works. Because different sports have different levels of arousal. So, so where this might be, uh, let's say, uh, weightlifting, uh, this might be cross-country running, and that might be golf, right? And in the sports where you need to be more relaxed, like distance running and long-distance swimming and golf and uh, well, a whole bunch of other sports, actually, you need to learn how to relax. So by doing this relaxation technique where you just simply lie down and you tense your muscles for five or ten seconds, and you say, relax, you will train your body to relax upon just simply hearing the word. That's the kind of state that you should probably be in before the gun goes off. Unless, of course, you're one of these people, right? If you're one of these people that you need a lot of pressure, then you don't want to warm up with a team that's having a good time and laughing and stuff. You want to be off on the side, and you want the coach to be in, you know, in your face going, you got to do it for the team. And you got to give them that, that whole pep talk kind of stuff, you know, the Rocky sort of talk. Because there are some athletes like that, right? One thing about sports psychology is we're not all the same. We're definitely not all the same. We all. We all tick to different things. I mean, we all march to our own drummers. And, you know, it's a, it's a very difficult job being a coach because you've got to learn the psyches and how the athlete operates of all of these individual athletes. And yet, somehow, you have to also treat them as one, as a team. It's a difficult thing to do. It's a very difficult thing to do. So the third rule of distance running is be relaxed. All right. Fourth rule, sports psychology for distance running, is befriend pain you're going to feel some pain. Now, you may not always feel pain, but there's a good chance that you're going to feel some pain. And there's a whole bunch of techniques on how to deal with pain. I recommend a technique I call the pain technique. Pain, P-A-I-N. First thing you do is perceive it. Pain is your enemy sometimes, and it's your friend sometimes. For example, sometimes you feel pain too soon, and it's not an indicator of the fact that you're going too hard. It's just you're feeling pain, but the truth is you can go faster. Sometimes you need to listen to that pain because that pain says, hey, you're in, aerobic you're in anaerobic debt here. You're running too hard. The lactate's starting to accumulate in your blood. And at this rate, you're only going to have so far to go before you're done. And you have to be able to judge that pain and to determine how far can you go at this rate before you're done. But for the most part, we feel lots of pain that is just quite literally a pain. So first thing you do is perceive it. Okay, I feel the pain. Second thing you do is analyze it. Is this pain indicative of the fact that I'm going too hard? Is this pain indicative of the fact that I might have an injury? I mean, there's a difference between the kind of pain you feel when you run up a hill and your legs hurt and your lungs hurt compared to the kind of pain you have you know, when you've got shin splints or a torn menisci or something, and that, that's the kind of pain that says, you know, okay, it hurts, and you're hurting your body, and that's when the race is just simply not important enough, and that's when you're done. Right. But the sort of the nuanced pain, the kind of pain that just prevents you from running fast, 
first thing you do is perceive it. And then you say, okay, I feel you, pain. Hello, I feel you, you're there. Then you start to analyze it. And you say, all right, I feel you, but are you indicative of the fact that I need to slow down, or are you just being a pain? And then if you determine that it's indicative of the fact that you need to slow down, well, then what are you going to do? You're slow down, right? But if you determine that your pain is just being a nuisance, then what you want to do is you want to intervene with that pain. So here's where we go back to rule number one. You can only concentrate on one thing at a time, right? So if you've got a headache and I stomp on your foot, your headache goes away, right? All your concentration goes down to, oh, my foot hurts now. It's not that whatever was actually causing the headache has changed. You know, the biochemistry of your brain hasn't changed. But your brain is only perceiving the pain in your foot now because that's the more important pain. So if you can only concentrate on one thing at a time, it means you can easily distract yourself from feeling the pain. Now you all know this because you've done things like, you know, if you've ever had like, you know, surgery or you broke a bone or you just got hurt, you go through the day and you don't feel it at all. And you're like, no, it's fine, I don't feel it at all. And then you lie down to go to bed and you're like, ow, that hurts. Because for the first time throughout the day, you're not being distracted by all kinds of other things and you're feeling that dull, aching pain. All right? Well, you can use the same technique. You can distract yourself so that you don't feel the pain. So pretend, let's say, you're running up a big hill, or particularly you're running through sand, or a particularly hard part of a course. And this is just one of a, literally a thousand techniques that you can use, and I really encourage you to visualize and create your own techniques, but this is just one of a thousand that you can use. So you run along, and you start to hurt. So I say, okay, I'm gonna perceive this pain. Before I negate it, right, before I say, I'm not gonna pay attention to you, I analyze it, and I say, all right, I perceive you, I'm gonna analyze you, yeah, I don't think you're indicative of the fact that I need to slow down, so, you know, my says has been knowing you, I'm gonna get rid of you. So you visualize yourself perhaps pulling out a black box, so sort of this, you know, like, little lunch pail sort of black box, right? Some shiny silver uh, hinges on it, and you flip that silver latch open, and you open up this black box, and then you visualize yourself as you're running, reach down, I know it sounds corny, but this stuff works, reach down inside your body and pull out all of the pain in your body. It's like a silhouette, like it's uh, made of cellophane. And you take that pain and you start to, start to crumple it up. And you're visualizing this as you run. You crumple that pain up into a little ball. You stick that ball inside the box. Slam the lid, lid shut on that box. And then take your master lock and poof, lock it in. And you start to swing that box over your head and poof, let it go. And, Watch it arc through the air and land and hit the dust and roll and poof, get covered with dust. All you did was distract yourself from thinking about the pain for the, part, for the hard part of that course. So if you're running up, you know, let's say you're running up like a 400 meter hill or something and you're feeling pain, right? You distract yourself from feeling that pain by thinking about something else, by visualizing that other thing. And it really doesn't matter what that other thing is. Whatever works for you is fine. But you visualize something else and then you're distracting yourself from feeling that pain. I call that the N in pain, negate. You've negated it. It's like you've sort of, sort of gotten rid of it. And you will be amazed how many times you run along and you feel pain and you tell yourself, okay, I feel you, but you're not serious, so I'm going to intervene by doing one of these visualization techniques where you visualize yourself dealing with the pain. Another one people often seem to like is that when they go by a water stop, if you have water, that the water magically sort of dissolves the pain away from you. You pour it over your head, it just sort of dissolves the pain away. Or uh, you turn and you talk to a friend. Or here's one that actually works. Sometimes you pick up the pace. Because you have to put concentration into the fact that you're running harder. You have to work harder. You have to think about, OK, I'm going to run harder here. And you, at the same process, you negate the pain. So that's actually one of my favorite ones, because it means you run faster when it's over. So the fourth rule of sports psychology for distance running is Befriend pain. It's going to happen. And please understand that we all have different levels of pain. It's not fair nor cool to say to someone, oh, you know, you know tough it out. It's not hurting me. If we take a, a little thumb screw, right, just to like, a little, you know, like a little screw, we put it on your thumb. For some people, you start to ratchet that screw down. You get to four turns, five turns, and they're like, yeah, I feel it. Six, ow, oh, that hurts. Seven, oh, stop. And other people, they get to eight, 
nine, okay, now I feel it, yeah, that hurts, okay, stop. We all have different pain thresholds. We all feel pain at a particular time. Your pain system doesn't work the same for everybody. It's a very famous distance runner. I think he was from Kansas, his name was Jim Ryan. This guy felt no pain. In fact, he burst his appendix. And he was like, yeah, I, th I don't know, he, something doesn't feel right down there. And he went to the doctor and the, you know, they diagnosed that his appendix had burst. For most people, it would be just like, ah, you know, I'm dying in pain. He was just like, I don't, you know, I don't really feel much down there. Different pain threshold. Right? So the fourth rule, befriend pain. All right, let's open up to questions. Questions you might have about anything we talked about or sports psychology in general. I mean, this is a huge field. There's all kinds of things we could talk about. What do you do, like, if it's really hot, it's like 95 degrees outside, you know your body is getting tired because you've been running, like, for almost three miles. Like, how could, is there a way you can distract yourself from, like, the feeling of heat? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, the first thing to do, and this is, this is a tactical thing, is a lot of people, you know, you've been trained to keep a windbreak, right? And it makes sense because if you keep a one meter distance between the person in front of you, you'll save five to seven percent of your metabolic energies. In other words, you'll make your effort five to seven percent better. And that's a lot, right? I mean, I would love to be able to take five to seven percent off of any one of my PRs, right? That's a huge improvement. But the first thing is tactical. Move away. Move out to the side, let the wind hit you so that the wind starts to you know, evaporate the sweat and cool you off a little bit. And the second one is and it's just the same old disassociation technique. You can visualize yourself running through something cold. You can vision, in fact, here, I'll do this. So uh, hold your palm out like that. All right. Now go ahead and close your eyes. And I want you to visualize a pile of hot sand in your palm. You can feel the weight of the sand pressing down on your palm. You can feel the heat sort of penetrating in your palm. You can feel the heat penetrating almost to the point where you feel like you might have to dump the sand, but you're able to hold it. Now go ahead and open your eyes. Take your other hand, touch your palm, and assess the temperature. OK? It's warm. Now, go ahead and hold your palm out again. And I want you to visualize yourself holding a nice big old snowball, nice fluffy white snow. And you can feel the weight of the ice pressing down. And you can feel the coolness, the cold of the snow penetrating the surface layer of your palm and starting to work its way down into the belly of your palm. You can feel some of the cold water as it melts and it begins to run down between the fingers, you can feel it run down the back side of your palm. And right, now go ahead and open your eyes, touch your palm. It's cooler. Some, for some of you it's the same. Okay, maybe we didn't do it long enough. Should have done the other palm, right? That way you didn't go from hot to cold. But you can actually redistribute blood flow by the, by the way you think, by thinking it's cold. So what I would encourage you to do is to tell yourself, yep, it's nice and cool, it's nice and cool, it's nice and cool. Visualize yourself running into a cool wind. If you have the opportunity to drop water over your head, feel the water pull all of the heat off your body. Now the truth is there's only so much you can do. You can't do magic. I mean this is this is just psychology. It's not, you know, it's not voodoo. You can't you can't take your body's temperature and make it 98.6 degrees when you're running in 100 degree heat. But you can try to disassociate from a little bit and see if you can reduce the, you know, the exhaustion that you feel from it. Part of what I'm trying to teach you is the habits of visualization. We'll make that the fifth rule. Rule number five to sports psychology, visualize. And I'm going to give you a, a demonstration on the power of visualization. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to tie this piece of thread to the paper clip so that you can hold the paper clip on its end. Which end? I don't care. The other end. <laughs> Uh, on the, not in the I'll, I'll do mine if I can, if I can do it. <laughs> well, I wanted to show you that you can hold it like that, but let me show you. Hang on, I, mean, I should be able to thread a needle, shouldn't I? There we go, like that. Okay. Woohoo! 